Hey there, so welcome back and in this video we're going to talk about virtual networks. So what you do is when you create any resource like uh, a compute machine which is a Linux or Windows machine, that machine needs an IP address or similarly when you create a database that needs an IP address or if one machine needs to talk to another machine, they communicate over the network or a machine in on-premise wants to talk to uh, Azure cloud or vice versa or machine in Azure in one region wants to talk to another region and for all those things you need a network. So let's look at what is virtual network called as in, uh, called as in Azure uh, which is also called as VNet or virtual network. So what you see in a right hand diagram is a virtual network or a network on Azure cloud where you see these outer dotted line as virtual network. So what exactly is virtual network is nothing but a private network in Azure cloud that enables resources like machines to talk to other machines or talk to internet or on-premise network. So this network helps in machine communication. Now network what you see or virtual network that is you see in cloud is similar to the network that you've been preparing on-premise. So your machines in your on-premise go onto different networks or the network that you create um, of your choice, something similar you do it on cloud as well. So virtual network is nothing but a continuous block of IPv4 or it could be IPv6 as well, CIDR blocks of your choice. Now what is CIDR block? I'm going to explain it in a minute and when you create a network this is what you're going to be uh, creating. You will be selecting an uh, CIDR block of your choice that will give you a range of IP addresses inside that network. Now VNet resides within a single region. So region is a geographical location where um, Microsoft Azure has their data center. So it's that VNet resides within a region but it can connect to another VNet within the same region or can be connected to another VNet in a different region or it can also connect to your on-premise network. So all these connections are possible. We are going to look at that in the future episodes or future videos. Now the IP address recommended for these VNets is as per RFC 1918. So RFC 1918 suggests saying that if you have your non-public uh, networks or networks that are not assigned to be publicly available. In that scenario, you will select these three ranges 10.10 .10 or 10-8 CIDR or 172.16.12 CIDR or 192.168.16 CIDR. What these CIDRs are or what does CIDR mean? I'll explain that in a minute. So typically when you're defining the CIDR, you select one of these three ranges as per RFC 1918. Now, VNet is scoped to subscription. So I'm going to show you in a minute how to create a VNet and that VNet will be attached to a subscription. In the previous video, when we were talking about creating the resource groups, at the time we saw what is a subscription. So that in a nutshell about VNet. So if you look at what is a CIDR, CIDR stands for a classless internet, internet domain routing. This is basically a way to assign a set of IP addresses inside the network. So if we, when we, when I say IP range or when we say IPv4, that has four octet. First one is 192.8 is one octet, which is eight digits, um, ones and zeros. Similarly, the second octet, third octet and fourth octet. So second octet 192.168, third octet is one, and then fourth octet is a zero. So these are typically represented by this octet is one here, second octet, third octet and fourth octet. So that's why we say IPv4. Now, when we say 16, which means first octet 8 and then second octet 8, 16, these two numbers are static and the number in this will change. So that's what 16 means. So here 192, 168 will be static and then remaining to 0, 0 are going to change, which means they can go from 0, 0 to all the way till 255.255 because in 2 to the power 8. So if you see octet, this is in the range from here and this is all together from here. They can go from 0 to 255. There are total two, 256. You can you can make it by changing zeros and ones. So it can go from 0, .0 to 255.255, 255, which is basically 65,536 IPs within that CIDR. So how do you create a number of IPs? 
total there can be 32 digits so 32 minus 16 16 remaining 16 to, to, to the power 16 is 65,536 so in that cider block 16 you can have up to 65,536 machines or IPs where 192 168 1.0 is represented by ones and zeros in this format which is octet 1 2 3 4 4 octet because it's IPv4 similarly when I say about 24 which means first three are going to be static it's 8 plus 8 plus 8 24 so first 24 are going to be static the only last digit will, is going to be changed so number of ips in this network is 32 our total of oct four octets 32 minus 24 which is 8 and 2 to the power 8 is 256 so in this uh, in this side range you can have up to 256 ips so this is in a nutshell about the side range now again if you don't remember easy to see this table or you can in google it if you want to find out how many ip addresses are in a particular cider you just give the cider range and then it will tell you what is the starting ip address what is the end ip address and how many ips you get inside that cider so this is the cider which we are going to use when we now create a uh, virtual network in azure so with that theory now let's go and see how to create this network where i'm going to create a network this network which is a virtual network inside that there will be something subnet we'll see that when i look at or when i explain or when i come to that point so let me go to the azure portal so if you say here i'm on a back on a azure portal we created uh, in one of the previous lessons and if you forgot uh, make sure you watch the first video where we covered how to register for azure cloud or microsoft azure cloud and in the second video, I created a resource group. Both of these things are important for you to do before you can uh, work on this activity guide. So, or before you can work on this video. So here I'm on a Microsoft Azure portal. And here I'm going to click on create a resource. We are going to create a virtual network or VNet. So I'll select VNet, which is virtual network. Click on this. Now, this is where we saw earlier as well, you have all the related documentation link and then I'll simply click on create to create this VCN or virtual network. So I'll give a name here. So I'll say K21 demo um, VNet. Now this is what's talking about address space. It's basically the virtual network address range in the CIDR notation. This is what I was talking or we looked at a CIDR range just now. So we'll say 192.168.0.0 CIDR 16, which means I should be getting uh, these many ranging from here till 255.255, 65,536 network. It's a quite a big network, but then just for explanation or just for here um, to show, uh, I wanted to show you how many IPs you get and easy to remember or understand that as well here. Now we can, we will be breaking down this network, bigger network, which is virtual network into smaller network, which is subnets. Now, Azure also gives you that within this network, you can also assign IPv6. We are not going to do it. You can change it later. I'm going to leave it to the default. Now subscription we covered earlier, the scope of this virtual network is subscription. We looked at in the previous video, what is subscription? Uh, so, and if you missed this previous video where we looked at resource group, go and check that. Now, so I already created a resource group and in the previous video, I created a resource group and that time I mentioned what is subscription. So if you forgot or missed, go back to that video uh, first. So this is the resource group I created, K21 demo RG. So I'll select that demo or RG. Now my network will reside inside a region and or location. So this is, I'm selecting the default US central location. So again, the network reside in a, um, inside a location or a, a region. Then you also need to create a subnet. So now I'll explain you what is subnet, which is nothing but a broken down or smaller segment of this uh, network. So let's look at what does uh, subnet represents. So if you have seen this diagram or just to explain you, you have a, outer dotted line which is a virtual network so we created a vnet which is 192.168.0.0 cider 16 now you can break this down this or you will have to uh, segment this bigger network into smaller networks we call it subnet so you might if you worked in past in on-premise you might have the uh, networks or subnets called um, 
web tier application tier or database tier so each vnet or virtual network is subdivided into smaller networks called a subnets which is again a same continuous block of ipv4 cider of your choice inside this vnet so you can represent one of the examples of our subnet representation is you have different tiers web tier in which you have all the load balances or or your web servers then you might have a apps tier which you which is your application where this is where your application logic sits or you can have a database tier or you can do all together different way of classification where you can say my production environment in one subnet and or dev test and machines are in a different subnet and so on so it's up to you or your network team to decide how you want to set up this subnet so let's go back to the um, vnet we were creating vnet and let's finish that vnet creation so this is where i'm going to select the name of the subnet which i'll say k21 dash demo dash vnet and then i'll specify the ip address range so the ip address of this range of subnet should always be inside the or subset of this bigger cider which is which has 65000 ips so in my case i'm going to pick up 32 oh sorry not 32 32 will be only one ip so i'll be picking up 24 and 24 will give me uh, roughly around 256 ip so 32 minus 24 8 to, to the power 8 is 256 IP. So this is where now you still have a lot of uh, IPs uh, free or available from that VNet because we have only in this subnet we have only used 256 IPs. Then you can reserve them. You can create a, another different subnets or for future um, creation or future um, you can have these reserved or create these subnets in a later or a later date for the remaining IPs. Now this is where there are two other things which is denial of service attack or distributed denial of service attack by default basic is free if you go for standard there's some extra charges for that so we we'll leave it to the default basic for now and in future we might look at and cover explain that in detail similarly there is a service endpoint so if any other service would like to access this network you can enable the endpoint but will and it will enable this later we are not going to use this right now because the purpose of this creating this a vnet or subnet is to create some machines or databases so we can check the provisioning of machines and we can connect to these machines so we'll leave it for time being uh, disabled for service endpoint similarly you can have the firewalls and firewall be, will basically control who or what processes can be accessible on on machines inside this subnet so let's suppose you are running a web server and you have 80 port number or 443 on which this web server is listening you can and if you enable the firewall then you have to specifically go and open that port and from security point of view it's good to have firewall enabled again i'm going to keep it for the time being disabled and we can change this later so we leave it to enable or disabled and then you click on create and this is going to create a virtual network of name k21 demo vnet with these many ip addresses or this cider 192.168.0.16 and i can i can pick up those many resources so if i want to see i'll go to the virtual network and that should have my network that i've created so it'll, it'll take some time to create on the background it's creating and it's now initializing the deployment of my resource no not resource group oh yeah inside that resource group i created uh the vnet it will take few minutes and it should be um it sh i should be getting that vnet so if i if you see i clicked on that deployment and deployment is sending so it's saying input for that was we were sending the demo vnet and inside the remote resource group k20 demo resource group location is central us and address prefix or cider for this is uh, 192.160.0016 inside that i'm creating a subnet k21 demo vnet and that cider is this and i don't want denial of service uh, endpoint protection as false and so on so what we should no deployment output so it didn't give me any output so we go back to and see if my virtual network have been created now so if you see now i've got my virtual uh, network or vnet which is demo 
Now, later I can go and change these settings like denial of protection or deni distributed denial of service or firewall and so on. So big congratulations. Uh, we've just finished on how to create a uh, virtual network and then also a subnet inside that. We're going to use this subnet now or this VNet and subnet in order to deploy our machines or databases in this way on Azure portal. So just to recap, we looked at virtual network. What exactly is a virtual network in this video? This is Atul from Team K1 Academy, and I'll see you in the next video with another topic in Azure. So guys, this was our expert from Team K21 Academy. If you also want to have a good job around Azure Cloud, then we have something really special for you. We have our absolutely free class on how to prepare for Azure Cloud jobs and certification. Under this interactive session, you'll be learning about top certification options in Azure Cloud, job opportunities, our eight week roadmap to learn, get certified and get higher paying jobs. So if you want to register for the same, all you have to do is just log on to k21academy.com forward slash AZ10402. You'll be seeing this kind of interface. Just click on book your free seat now. And after that, select event date, add your full name, your email address, your phone number and click on yes, save my seat now. Moving ahead, you'll be seeing this kind of link on the extreme right. You just have to click it, save it and I'll see you in the free class. Till then, take care and keep learning.